Well, you know, obviously he's older, and uh, anybody starts to deteriorate, especially the sport we're in, how long he's been in here in the sport. You know, he's had those back problems, neck problems, and all that. And it wears on you, you know, and going to training camp and everything. But, you know, I'm taking this fight as the best Tito that's ever going to come out, and I'm prepared for that, you know. You know, he, his back's on the wall. He's, uh, um, you know, he came out and said that, you know, UFC let him, let him go last fight and beg for his job back, you know. So he's going to come out and throw everything he's got at me. I'm prepared for that, and I hope the best Tito comes out to fight. Uh, uh, but I'm looking at this fight as a, not an easy fight at all. I think it's one of my harder fights. and. I'm ready for that, and uh, I'm honored to fight Tito. And uh, you know, I grew up watching him, like you're saying, watching him fight forever. Have similar backgrounds, and uh, I can't wait. Specifically, more along those lines, uh, in, in, um, in addition to just kind of physically kind of wearing down over the years, do you see him? Does, does he do anything differently, or do you think he's kind of the same fighter he's always been? Um, a little bit of both. You know, you uh, used to see him take more, you know, take people down more often. Uh, but you know, his last couple of fights, you know, with Hamlet, all that, I think he tried one takedown, whether that's him not thinking he can, doesn't want to spend energy on another wrestler taking him down, but he fought a guy like Forrest and he was looking for that, you know, at least early on in the rounds. Um, so, you know, that could be a factor, maybe his explosiveness. When he was younger, he used to go in there, bully people, just right in their face, and, and uh, uh, you know, look for that takedown, you know, aggressively, whereas in the last couple of fights, he does that in the beginning of the first round, and then uh, around the like, three minute mark of that first round, he comes out really, really hard, and then he starts to kind of taper off a little bit, especially with those uh, takedown attempts, because uh, they're exhausting, you know, a lot of times. So um, maybe that's him being older, but you know, I expect him to be in great shape for this fight and come out and uh, try to take me out. So, Ryan, some people are kind of looking at this as a, a no-win type fight for you. I mean, if, if he beats you, that's a huge upset. If you beat him. Who did you beat? You know, yeah. you beat uh, do you see it that way at all, or do you feel like there's something to gain out of this fight? Yeah, of course there's something to gain. You know, uh, Tito's a huge name. He's a great fighter. I still believe he's in, you know, a uh, uh, top tier fighter. You know, he's strung together a couple losses the last, you know, three, four years. But he's fighting the top competition, and, you know, um, it pisses me off because people come up to me and they're like, who are you fighting with Tito Ortiz? And they're like, oh, you got this, you don't even have to train. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, he's, he's a, he's a, he lost the last couple of fights, but top competition, he's been in all those fights, he's hard to finish, he's going to come after me and, uh, you know, it's, it's do or die for him. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I am in, in a weird position, you know, uh, uh, he's coming off losses, um, I'm supposed to beat him, and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I'm going to do my job, go out there and win. And uh, everything else will take care of itself. And it's one of the fights I couldn't pass up, you know, fighting one of the guys that I grew up watching, uh, that I like to watch fight. Um, you know, couldn't pass it up. The name was offered, said absolutely, once in a lifetime. You know, all those other guys like a Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture are gone, you know, when you get to fight a guy like that. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited for this fight, and uh, I have a lot of fire come off a loss, and uh, I just want to get back in there and get back to winning. You talk about like all that Tito has accomplished and what his name means in the sport. Have you ever been in a position like that before, where you're fighting somebody that's that you were a fan of, basically? And do you think you'll get kind of caught up? I mean, you're a veteran at this point, but do you think you'll be kind of caught up in the moment, like it's, it's something special? No, you know, one of the first ones was Jardine fight. You know, I, uh, I mean, I was still wrestling in college when he was fighting and on the Ultimate Fighter and stuff, and uh, that was kind of I would say that fight was that kind of thinking because I was fighting not lower level guys but guys not with the big names and been in there for a while but then I jumped into the fight with Jardine and so that would be where all those kind of emotions came you know you're like oh I'm ready for a guy like this and, and all that kind of thing going through your head um, then I fight a guy like Noguera who I, I watched also in the, you know in pride and all that so um, this fight is uh, I'm fighting an opponent out there I'm not fighting Tito Ortiz he can't bring his past championships in, you know, the cage and the octagon with him. Neither can I can bring the past opponents I beat. So it's just going in there fighting the guy across from the cage. Afterwards you can look back and be like, oh that was cool, beat Tito Ortiz and all that, but he's just a good fighter standing in my way right now. Brian, uh, if you could evaluate your fight with Jones and where you came up short and if was it something that just he was that good, or do you feel like you made mistakes that, in retrospect, you could correct? Yeah, it was a combination of both. I definitely made a lot of mistakes I could correct, and I was uh, pissed off at myself mainly because I felt like I didn't fight to my full potential. And uh, he is good, and he's very frustrating. You know, obviously went in and just you know took down Shogun pretty easily, and and uh, he's frustrating fighter to fight because he's so long and has a lot of different tools, and he's good in all aspects of MMA. Uh, 
And it, you know, I was pissed off myself because I felt, felt like I didn't fight to my potential. And uh, I was flat. I haven't had enough years of competition to know that happens. But um, definitely, I could learn a lot. I have learned a lot, and would learn a lot. You know, going into a fight and definitely change a lot of things. And uh, I changed a lot of things in this training camp, in particular. You know, a lot of it is experience. Being in big fights like that and uh, uh, worked a lot of my footwork, my, my stand-up technique, and not trying to kill a guy with one punch every time, and that in turn work helps your cardio, you know, just being relaxed in there, so um, that's where I'm kind of at right now. And uh, use it, fuel for the fire, man, and had a great great training camp because of that loss. I don't ever want to feel that again. We'll do two more questions. All right, every time you've been training for a fight, it's been as an undefeated fighter, and you haven't had to deal with uh, defeat at all through your career. Was there a different mentality in the training camp coming off a loss? Absolutely, you know. Uh, Right when I walked back into the you know the locker room after the Jones fight, you know I was pissed and I don't it sucks losing and I want to get in the octagon the week after you know that's how you feel. Uh, but went back to the drawing board and it just forced me to change a lot of things and and kind of just uh, uh, start with a clean slate and build on a lot of a lot of stuff you know um, build a lot on my cardio a lot on my uh, technique as far as stand up and jiu jitsu and everything and uh, I became more efficient and uh, worked a lot of my footwork throwing straighter punches, being more technical, and uh, in turn that helps with the cardio, relaxing in there, whereas before I'd go in there, kind of just like, you know, just tensed up, trying to end the fight with one punch, where I look back and see where, you know, things started, like with Jardine, it all started off a straight right hand, and, and so I went back to drawing board, and I had that rejuvenation to, to get back in the gym and get better, and uh, uh, work towards um, being better in all, you know, aspects of my game, so, I just use it as a, as a plus, and it just gave me more fire when I, I felt sorry for myself in training camp, as we all do at some point. I thought about not wanting to feel that you know, loss again and, and get back to winning. Just a follow-up to that, is there a concern like when you step in the cage there's not that sense of invincibility anymore that you had when you were undefeated? Yeah, you know, it's kind of nice. Uh, you don't have that whole undefeated pressure and all that, but every fight, is, is a lot, I put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, my team, everything, you know, I just feel I just got to represent all that and, uh, you know, if I could just fight to the best of my abilities and my potential every time, I'd be happy and fight like I do in training. And I think this is one of the fights where I'm going to do that. So, kind of extending on all of that, um, because you went through what you did with John Jones, do you think that now T. Ortiz is in more danger because of what you learned and because of how you've grown since then? Yeah, I really do. You know, um, whereas I could get by with my wrestling or you know, big overhand rides or just, you know, big shots. I just went, like I said, went back to the drawing board and, and, and worked a lot on my technique. And I saw that in my training camp, how much better I was and how, you know, uh, with, with using all of that and sparring, and sparring tough guys, you know, and uh, um, it really helped me out. And I feel like I'm a way, a way more dangerous fighter than I was in all my previous fight. Because if you, see, if you you get by and you win on something, the whole, it's, if it's not broke, you know, don't fix it kind of deal. That's maybe what I was kind of riding on. You know, go in there, I uh, went a close fight with Noguera, you know, uh, um, and I'll say I wasn't in the best shape for that fight. We were in between camps, I was, you know, in a small gym and, and I got by just doing what I just do, you know, and then taking a loss just gave me that motivation to, like I said, clear the slate get back to drawing board, work on a lot of things, and just uh, reinvent myself as a, as a fighter.